So when you apply for a US visa, while applying for the visa, they ask you for your social media credentials. So what if I leave the link of this YouTube channel there and they end up watching this video in which I talk about the cons of studying in USA. And what if I do not get a visa because of that? Anyhow, let's get started. Okay, so the first biggest con that we have of United States is that it's expensive. And obviously all of us know that United States is expensive. That's a major con. But one thing you need to understand that private universities are expensive. Public universities are not actually that expensive. So if you're going to a public university, those are not usually that expensive. But then the top universities that you look at are usually private universities. Apart from that, another thing that you can go for, which usually people do not know, is that there is a state called Texas. And if you move to that state and you get a scholarship of more than $1,000, which is not actually a lot of scholarship. If you get a scholarship of more than $1,000, then you have to pay in-state tuition fees. Now, what's in-state tuition fees? So basically one is out-of-state tuition fees, the other one is in-state tuition fees. In-state tuition fees means that this student is from the same state and as a result, he will have to pay less of a tuition fees. He usually ends up paying 40% of the tuition fees. On the other hand, out-of-state tuition fees means these are international students or are from different states and they have to pay an extra fees to study in Texas, let's suppose. But if you get a scholarship of $1,000, then you have to pay the in-state tuition fee. So the amount of fee that you pay actually goes down dramatically. Second is cost of living in many of the cities is very expensive. So let's take an example of New York. New York is 40% more expensive than Toronto, which is amongst the most expensive places after Vancouver in Canada. So 40% more expensive expensive is the living expense and apart from that your housing expenses are approximately 103 percent more than toronto so yes new york is very expensive same california is very expensive so there are some cities which are very expensive but then there are these cities which are actually very cheap third is part-time work so you can do part-time work in united states let's suppose you're studying in university of texas so yes you can study in university of texas and at the same time work on campus so that means you can work work in University of Texas, you can work in the library, you can work in there are so many administrative departments, you can work anywhere. What are the cons? First, you do not get paid much. Second, it is very hard to find these jobs on campus because all of the international students are looking for these jobs. So can you work off campus? For that, you need CPT. Now CPT is curricular practical training. That means you can do an internship or part-time work outside your campus, but that should be authorized and should be in your curriculum. So it should be mentioned in your curriculum, your education curriculum that yes, this person is eligible to do CPT. Now, if that is possible, then you get a, then you have to go and apply for CPT and get one year ka CPT. Now, if you have that, you can work off campus as well, but let's suppose you end that, then there is something called OPT, optional practical training. So that is more or less like a post-study work visa. Once you're done with your studies, you get that. How long is that? So that's a fourth con. So first it's for one year for non-STEM students. So for non-STEM students, I do not recommend USA because it's just a one year OPT optional practical training. But for STEM students, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, you have, you get a three year post-study work visa or a OPT. But if you complete your entire CPT, then you do not get an OPT. Wow, that's interesting. So if you waste out your entire CPT, that 12 months of practical training that you could do alongside with your studies, if you completely do that, then you cannot go ahead with OPT. So that's a bit confusing. You can read more about it. I'll leave some links in the description. You can read more about that and get a complete understanding as to how CPT and OPT works. But at the same time, when we talk about the work that you will be doing on your campus, you can only work 20 hours. You cannot work 21 hours. You cannot work more than that only 20 hours during your curriculum during the term that is going on but in your winter breaks in your summer breaks you can go on and work till 40 hours on campus staying at the point of visa only we have our fifth con and you know my journey i've told this in almost all my videos that i was very fortunate enough to start fin ladder when i was in college only because if I would have started with Finn Ladder when I was not in college and I would have been graduated and if it, would have, if it would have failed at that time, I would have lost everything. But I was fortunate enough that I started it in my college and even if it had failed at that time, I would have not lost anything. In fact, my uh, CV would have just uh, become a bit more stronger and that is why I recommend everyone to get started with the startup alongside with your college because it just gives you so much freedom. I'm making these YouTube videos because I have a startup which is getting me money and I do not need to worry about it. 
on the other hand if i would have not had that i would have been working at a corporate job i would have taken the jobs that i had and i would have not been making these videos so yeah i was fortunate enough to do that alongside with my college but can you do that in united states you cannot so in united states you will be coming on an f1 visa now if you're coming on an f1 visa you cannot work as a startup founder how can you work you can only be a investor a passive investor or if you want to work at a company you can be a passive partner you cannot be actively working you cannot be making salaries you cannot be making commissions you cannot be making profits that is what it states in the f1 visa so you cannot be running your own thing alongside with your college those are the rules of f1 visa so yeah you cannot start your own startup and that is a major red flag for me i cannot do that if i were given a chance to go to a separate country and i would any day any day plan to start another startup i don't know if that works for you as well if you would plan to do that also but if you do then i would actually not recommend uh, united states because f1 visa rules are very strict and if you do that i don't know what exactly would happen but i would not want to take that risk sixth point is once you are done with your opt your optional practical training which is more or less like a post study work visa then you have then you want a company that would sponsor you to stay in united states now that again is a messed up thing in itself and approximately 30% people end up being rejected even if they get a sponsor their sponsorship gets rejected and they're not given a visa even after an opt so that still happens Seventh con is that of crime rate. Now we all know that United States is well known for its racial discrimination. The amount of racial profiling that happens in United States at its airports that's a very common thing and at the same time it's not that safe for students. But then there are so many localities in United States which are actually very safe. But what happens with us? Us as Indians, we try to go and stay at places which are very cheap. Now when we live live in such cheap uh, neighborhoods what happens is the crime rates are usually higher in those neighborhoods what you can do is spotmycrime.com is a place where you can check which neighborhood which locality has more crimes and try to stay away from those localities it's like if you want to enter into a fight you will enter into a fight but if you try to stay away from it you'll always stay a bit safer so that is what i would want to recommend you guys so if you plan to go to united states all these points do not affect you much then definitely check out which locality you are living in and if the crime rates are higher in that locality try to go to a different locality so next is green card backlog which everyone knows about so out of the every country gets a 7% quota of green cards and according to india 120000 people are destined to get a green card but out of them only 8 lakh 8400 will be getting it and there are 1.4 million people who will be applying for it and according to the current backlog it would take somewhere around 195 years to get a green card in united states so yes it's difficult but then this is the this is not the only way to get a green card if you're working as an employee and working as a highly skilled employee then this is the case for you 195 years approximately but yeah getting a citizenship and getting a pr in united states is very tough on the other hand in canada it's very easy in australia still possible in uk slightly tough but still possible in germany very much possible since you're already watching a video on united states i'm pretty sure at the back of your mind you might also be thinking about canada so i would recommend you to watch this video in this we cover about united states versus canada and then there you'll understand where are the points where actually canada wins and you might want to reconsider your choice of taking united states